Let's see if my laziness is about to pay off. Last week, as I was looking for objects to scan, I quickly captured an interesting interior with my phone. It's a really disgusting place to be in, but it has a lot of character. So now it's time to scan properly with my camera. But doing that the traditional way... Ain't nobody got time for that! With a regular scanning method, you really have to be patient and meticulous. You have to go from wall to wall, capturing every single detail. If you're not careful, it's easy to lose track of what you've captured so far. So you might end up with areas that are not scanned at all. I'm not the most patient person, so the idea of having to go through this whole process sends shivers down my spine. And that's when I thought of motion control. I already have a motion control system, and in theory, I could use that to capture all the images needed. The process is automated, so there's not much input needed from my side. The only thing I would have to do is move the tripod to the next scanning spot. So if this whole thing works, I'll have a process that is not only fast, but is also much more precise. That's in theory, at least. Let me show you how I plan to approach this. This is a two-axis system, it's two Gini Minis on a bracket, which gives us the ability to move the camera on both the X and Y axis. We can also set up how much the camera will rotate on X and Y, so we can define exactly the area we want captured. And because there's so much freedom in movement, both the ground and ceiling can be captured in one go. There's no need to program another movement. The other good thing with the Gini Mini is the ability to set up exactly the amount of overlap between pictures. Something necessary when grabbing images for photogrammetry. The system calculates on its own how many pictures are needed in order to grab the given area. There is no complicated math or guesswork involved. The system handles everything for you. The Gini Mini also connects to the camera through a cable, so I don't need to press the button to capture an image. Once the camera is in position, the Gini Mini will send the command to take a picture. Overall, the whole setup is quite intuitive. It needs minimum user input, which is exactly what I want. Now, here's the layout of the space. I will start on this wall first. I'm gonna set up the motion control system to scan 180 degrees on the X and around 80 degrees on the Y. Then I will move the tripod a bit to the right and repeat the same 180 and 80 degree scan. I'm gonna repeat that for all walls until I have the whole room scanned. Ideally, I should also go to each corner and do a 90 degree scan on the X and an 80 degree scan on the Y. But I'm too lazy to set that up, so I'm going to skip this part and see how much I can get away with. It doesn't really take that long to set up, but as I've mentioned already, I'm just lazy. So let's see how that will go. The ground has a ton of garbage and other little details, so ideally I should also give some more attention to that area if I want to get the maximum amount of detail. That means that I would have to lower the setup closer to the ground and scan it row by row. But you guessed it, I'm gonna skip that part as well. It'll just take more time and this place is just super disgusting, so I don't really wanna be there for too long. On top of that, it's a trial run to see if this whole setup will work, so we can cut some corners, it'll be fine. So let's do this. I ended up grabbing almost 300 pictures, 291 to be exact. It all went fine aside from some occasions where my camera failed to focus, so the trigger from the motion control system wouldn't grab an image. But Jenny Mini's interface is really good. I could easily pause the process, take the picture manually, and then continue with the automatic scan. 
This usually happened on the dark areas of the room. Panasonic's cameras use contrast detect focus, so there are times where the system will fail and you'll have to do things the manual way. It's no big deal though, at least for this kind of thing. In other cases, this focusing method can be super annoying. I want to grab a few more details here and there, but the place was so smelly and filthy I just decided to call it quits. And besides that, 300 pictures is not bad, it's quite a bit of information. As a matter of fact, with all this data, the software was hard at work trying to create a 3D object. Usually it takes around half an hour or so to get a 3D object back, but this time it took more than one and a half hours to process things. Maybe the system had a hard time finding similarities between pictures. Maybe it was because I used a lot more images than usual, don't know the reason, but it definitely took a long time. So, let's see the results. As a reference, here's the quick and dirty scan I did with the iPhone. And just to remind you, this one was when I was location scouting, so I wasn't really trying to capture the place properly. I just wanted to get a feeling of the space. For 87 pictures and for the little time I was there, the result is not that bad. But this one can't hold a candle next to the scan with the motion control system. The object is much more detailed, and you can already tell from the size of the file, it's 1.34 gigabytes in size. The scene has 8 million polygons in total, and if I enable the wireframe, the whole mesh turns black. There's a lot of nice details captured, as expected the floor is not as detailed because I didn't specifically target that part, but overall it's fine. I think the floor would have needed a ton more pictures in order to get right. There was just so much junk there. There are some dead spots on the ceiling where there wasn't enough information. There were occasions where the GH5 missed focus and I also didn't go back to take the shot myself, so that could be the reason for that. Another one might be because I didn't take any shots from each corner of the room, so the software had to work with fewer data. The windows also lack details, but that's because I didn't bother with any close-ups of that area. If I did, then the model would have been epic. But overall, I'm very happy with how things turned out. The whole experiment was a really nice exercise in capturing big spaces. First off, I'm very happy that my lazy idea actually works. The motion control system does automate the process quite a bit, so if you have something similar in your toolbox, I would highly suggest using it. It's so much easier to shoot this way, and the results are also very good. So give it a try. Of course, things can be improved and refined a little bit more. For example, Grabbing the whole room in one go is not really the best or the smartest approach. It just makes every part of the process really difficult. A better way to handle this would be to divide the room into smaller segments. That helps ease the burden when grabbing the images because the task is now much smaller in scope. Because you focus on a smaller area, you can also spend more time capturing that area in more detail. Dividing the room into segments also helps when calculating the 3D object later on. You won't have to wait hours for the 3D object to process, and you also won't end up with a huge object that will be difficult to manipulate. The remeshing and UVing process will be much easier with smaller pieces. So that's definitely one thing I will change on my next scan. I will just focus on one wall at a time or one piece of ground at a time. And then once everything is processed with a new mesh, UVs and a properly diffuse texture, then I can bring everything together as one piece. Another thing is shooting the right time of day. In this occasion it didn't matter because the scan was just the test, but if I wanted to capture the textures properly, an earlier time of the day would have been a better fit. Currently there's a lot of light variation. Some areas are very bright and others very dark. There are also quite a few hard shadows. Shooting very early in the morning would have been much better. I could get a nicer lighting and less contrasty areas. Of course, the whole scanning process would have taken much longer because I would have to use a long exposure time, but that's the name of the game, we can't really avoid that. And the final result would have been much, much better in the end. 
Shooting with a wider lens would have sped up the process quite a bit. I've used the 28mm lens which is wide enough, but if I could cover an even bigger area with a wider lens, I wouldn't have to take as many pictures. In this case I didn't have much choice because that's the widest lens uh, I have, but one alternative would have been to rent a lens. So if you don't have exactly the lens you want, consider that option. Usually renting a lens for a day or two is not that expensive. The next thing I will use the motion control for is going to be surfaces, like walls or big rock formations. I think it's going to work perfect for this type of thing, so keep an eye on that in a future video. I might not do it right away, but it's coming. Anyway, I think that's about it for this video. I'll have the links for the Gini Mini in the description below, so if you're interested in getting that for your photogrammetry work, you know where to find it. It's a very flexible device because you can use it for pretty much anything. HDRIs, panoramas, establishing shots, time lapses. It's a really cool setup. It's a tiny bit on the expensive side, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Anyway, let me know what you think of the scan in the description below. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.